Hi everybody, my name is Caroline Wiseman, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm going to be talking to you guys today about anti-aliasing and fonts. So uh, let's start at the beginning. Monitors use pixels to display things, and pixels are squares. So that's sort of the basic here. This works great for drawing straight things. Not so good for when things are slanted, right? You get this sort of edgy kind of stuff and really bad for when you have curves. So anti-aliasing comes in here by uh, blending between the foreground and the, the, the background using shades that are partly in between the foreground and the background to smooth out your lines that are curves or slants. So it looks like this. Um, in this example, on the left-hand side, you have something that's anti-aliased, and here you have one that's not. Of course, it's very rare that you would not anti-alias something, but this is just to show you what it, it does. So this is at 800% uh, zoom, a 40-point font. And you can see where uh, here, you know, like this is completely black, and here it's like gray and shades of gray. Um, and so there are a lot of things that this affects. Uh, anti-aliasing is great, right? I mean, because when you look at it here, if you can see, I know it's small, but that's at actual, uh, at 100% size, it makes things look smooth, especially when you have something that's big, right? At 130 points, the anti-aliasing is awesome, right? Because here is no anti-aliasing, all jagged. Here's with it, it's beautiful. Uh, so anti-aliasing is a really good thing. It can just sometimes have bad side effects in certain cases, and you have to understand it um, if you want to uh, make your fonts as, as good as possible. So. Uh, the smaller your font, the more anti-aliasing comes into play. So this is a case where you've got a 14-point font. And you can see, in this case, there's a huge difference between what the anti-aliased one looks like and what the non-anti-aliased one looks like. And this is really tiny for the people in the back, but uh, it makes a big difference whether you're at 100% or whether you're zoomed in. And of course, one of the things uh, is that with anti-aliasing, it doesn't always, you know, most of the time you're dealing with alpha transparency instead of a solid background. And so uh, what the anti-aliasing does would be to take the foreground color and do shades of transparency to do that blend. So why should you care? I already mentioned earlier, understanding anti-aliasing can help you pick the best font for your website, and picking the best font really improves usability because a bad font can make something that's data heavy in particular really hard to read. So here's an example. This was from um, USA Today. I think they're actually, they've chosen a really good font. Uh, you can see it at 100%. Uh, it's pretty readable. And when you zoom it in, I think one of the reasons it's so readable, you can see there's very little anti-aliasing going on here. And how, how, why is it like that? It's because they've picked a font that is very straight line, right? They have very few curves in this font. They don't have serifs. Um, and so this really makes a, a a good impact on the legibility of your fonts. A few good fonts to use for small type, Verdana, Helvetica, Arial. Um, Arial's a little overused, but Verdana and Helvetica are, um, Helvetica's been around for years. It's sort of the original look good on screen font. Uh, but these are classic. They have very straight lines and a lot of air in them, make them really good. And then here are a couple that are particularly good. These are well-known fonts. These are all web-safe fonts, like meaning that uh, over 95% of people have them on, installed on their computers. These are two that look great at larger sizes. They li have a little bit more curve to them, which you can get away with at larger sizes because you have enough pixels to deal with the anti-aliasing. Um, one thing that you can do to sort of combat the negative effects of anti-aliasing is adding more error into your font. So when you have a block of text, adding more letting, which is the space between your lines, and adding more kerning, which is the space between the letters, helps a lot. And this just shows you why that's important, especially on the kerning. So if you have, and this was just, in this case, default kerning. Um, and so even with the default kerning, with certain fonts, if you're not careful at certain uh, sizes, the letters start to, to bleed together, and that is really uh, bad for legibility. So just to wrap up, uh, understanding this can just uh, help you improve what fonts you pick and how legible they are. 
uh, favor sans serif fonts with straighter lines, especially on small type. That's not to say never use serif fonts because there are some websites that use serif fonts effectively. It's just uh, you're safe. It's a safer bet to go with a sans serif. If you're not sure, choose one of those sans serif fonts and you're safe. If you're going to go serif, you just have to be a little bit more careful. If you don't know what the serifs are, those little things like uh, Georgia, that's a serif font. It's got the little things on it like that. And ones that don't have those little things are sans serif. And then uh, just the last point was use air uh, to uh, make sure that your letters aren't bleeding into each other. <laughs>